Now in part A, the first thing that I would want to do is to make sure that I define the random variable x. So I'm going to say let x be the random variable, we'll call that r.v for short, and it's going to be the IQ of a child. And then I would want to state what the distribution is, and in this case it is normal, so we say x is distributed normally, and it has two parameters in here, the mean, which we know is 100, and the variance, which is the standard deviation squared, so that would be 15 squared. I could write in there the value of 15 squared, which is 225, but I prefer, since we're given it as 15, to write it as 15 squared. Next I would want to draw the normal distribution, so it would look something like this. Label the axis x, we've got the mean here of 100, and we're being asked to find the probability of being a child having an IQ of less than 91. So I'm going to assume it's somewhere over here. And I'll mark that in as an observed value, little x, of 91. I feel it's very important that you draw sketches in these kind of questions. So we're looking for the probability that x is less than 91 and that is given by this area here, to the left of 91. And when you do this, I always draw another diagram directly underneath this one, the standardized normal distribution, which is denoted by z, and hopefully remember that z follows also a normal distribution with a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. So this would be 0. I would then draw a line straight the way down from our observed value in this table and this would be a z value. I'm going to call it z1. And the probability then of x being less than 91 is exactly the same as the probability of being less than z1 from this particular distribution. Now in order to work this out I need to know that z any z value on here is equal to the observed value up here, which is x, minus the mean, all over the standard deviation. So in this particular setup, we've got that z, or z1 in this case, will equal the observed value, which is 91, minus the mean, which was 100, all over the standard deviation, which was 15. And if you work that out in the calculator, you'll find that you get that Z1 is minus 0 0.6. I'll just pop in there that Z1 is minus 0 0.6. So, we now want this probability. So, the probability of X being less than 91 is exactly the same as working out the probability that z is less than minus 0.6. Now, when it comes to looking values up into the, in the tables, your tables only work out the probability to the left of a z value, that is less than a z value, but providing the z value is on the right hand side of zero. So we're not going to have much luck looking this up at the moment. So in other words, to get around this problem, I just mirror this z value, which I'll write in if you like, is equal at the moment to minus 0 0.6. If I mirror that across to this side, okay, the z value this time will be 0 0.6, and if I look at this area, this area is exactly the same as that area there. So this is equal to the probability that z is more than 0 0.6. But remember the tables only look up the area to the left, but knowing that the whole area is 1, I can say that this is the same as 1 minus the probability that z is less than 0 0.6. And in tables, 
the probability of a z value being less than something is often written as phi of this particular value, 0.6. So all I need to do now is look up the value of phi of 0.6 in tables. So if we bring some tables up, okay, we've got a set of tables here, and I'm looking for 0.6 for the z value, and you'll see it's in this column here. Here it is here, z is 0.6, and the corresponding phi of z value is 0.7257. So that means that I can pop this in here as 1 minus phi of 0 0.6, which we saw was 0 0.7257. Working that out, we get 0 0.2743. And the three significant figures, that's going to be 0 0.2743. Four to three S F. Three synonym figures. And that brings us now to the end of part A.